If you want to hear a German talk passionately about something, you can lead the conversation in one of three topics, either beer, bread, or football. We already did a video about the first two, and in this video, we're going to talk about the football culture in Germany. We will divide this video in three sections. The first one is a national level. You already see the excitement. The second section is about the club league or the Bundesliga. And the third section is how to get involved in this beautiful culture. <laughs> I'm not too much into football, but here we are. I could hear the sarcasm in your <laughs> voice. Hey, my name is Jen and I'm from Guatemala. And mine is Yvonne and I'm German. And together we're from SimpleGermany.com, where we create English content to empower internationals to settle into life in Germany more smoothly. smoothly. It's no news that Germany is known as a football giant if you look at the world scheme and World Cup wins and all of that jazz. However, for, my, for myself in my lifetime, I got to feel and see the emotion and energy football can generate in 2006. That was the year when Germany hosted the World Cup and I was old enough to witness it and something magical happened. The country united and it was the first time that I ever saw so many German flags being waved from the cars, from houses, on the streets and people feeling proud to wear our colors. I would say this is a massive kind of like accomplishment, especially after the World War II and the shame that came along with uh, waving a German flag. Kind of like that moment united people outside of that shame and outside of proud. the political arena, especially. Yeah. 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 Football is life in Germany and it is a way to express emotions and the German culture like no other way possible. Not just on the national level, but especially on the club level, which we will talk about later on, of course. But the fact that in my life, so I would consider myself a football enthusiast. Jen and I often have discussions about fan versus enthusiast versus... I think you're a fan. Yeah, I that's don't. that's a different topic. And we will get to that when we talk about club level because there's a real distinguishment in Germany mm. between a fan and an enthusiast. So what I'm getting at here is that I never owned a club jersey. Um, I'm a sympathizer with a certain club, which we can talk about later, but I never owned a club jersey. However, the fact that I owned three different German national team jerseys, I would say expresses a lot. So I own the one from 2006, obviously, because of the World Cup happening here. Then I own the one from the women's national team, when also the World Cup was hosted in Germany. And then we own these two. This is from 2014, the, the jersey. First, we got that one before the World Cup started. And after we won the World Championship the last time, we got this one, which is the fourth star World Championship jersey. I would say that was the very first time I experienced a World Cup in a country where it was a strong contender. Germany and actually Germany won and I remember for the finale we went to see it uh, in Dusseldorf there's like the Rhine promenade and we went there where it's like a public viewing and it was the very first time in my life I had been here very shortly I think two or three years and it's the only time since that I've seen actually Germans sing the national anthem and actually stand up and being proud of the sound and the music not everyone for sure there were some exceptions but in general like this unity feeling that you you shared I felt it for the very first time also in such a public viewing here in Dusseldorf. Now this summer in 2024, in just a few weeks, the Euro Cup in German Europameisterschaft or in short EM will start again in Germany. Germany is the host country and you know, it's been the same process so far that the expectations and enthusiasm is quite low beforehand. But in 2006, the moment it started, just energy started flowing in the country. And we are having high hopes that this will be the same this time and that we are looking at another fairy tale summer. <laughs> of football. Yay. <laughs> anyway, so how do you even watch these EM games? So I would say, like you say, football is culture in Germany and the best way to do it is with others, is in a community. There's a lot of public viewings that happen. Every city organizes public viewing places and you simply have to Google public viewing. Actually, you use the English word, right? Plus EM and your city and you'll be able to find the locations where you can go watch a football game with others. Because I think watching it with others make it so much more exciting and emotional as well and you feel every goal or loss depends, right? I love uh, supporting the German team when they win, of course. <laughs> um, but additional to that, you can watch it where else, like in public viewing, some bars. In bars, yes. As well, they uh, show the game. And very rarely do you watch it at home alone, unless maybe you have cable and you invite others to come to your home and watch it together. 
But I would say watching the EM and the World Cup, usually it's a thing that you watch with other people. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And uh, speaking of public viewing, every city organizes something, like you said. However, Berlin is, I would say, world famous also for um, its public viewing mile, uh, we, we call it nowadays. It started again in 2006, and since then it's been a tradition that the entire area in front of the Brandenburg Gate and the um, the the connecting streets is blocked and closed and this time they will actually even put like fake grass to make it feel like a like a soccer court it's uh, it's a beautiful place to be if you're in Berlin or the area around and not just the German team playing but every game is being shown, shown there <laughs> Also, depending on the company culture, it could be very common that your company organizes public viewings as well that you can watch with your colleagues. I experienced this also for the World Cup. The company that I was working on, they also organized viewings and drinks and food, well, some snacks, and we would all watch the game there together Same as well. in my company, yeah, totally. Now let's talk about the club league level, which I would say is where the heart of the German football culture lays. I couldn't agree more. Yes, and this is a constant, whereas a national team is something that pops up, dies out, pops up, dies out, whenever yeah. the event schedule pretty much allows it. So as you've probably heard from my tone of voice in this video, I am not into football that much. I watch it when the national t team plays, to be honest, and the rest I just hear she from... She couldn't care less. Yes, yeah, so that's why the, I think before we start about the club league, sorry if you already know this information, but if you're like a beginner football fan, then we should talk about how it works. Maybe the basics. The basics. Okay, let's uh, introduce it real quick. Similar to other countries, Germany's club football follows a league system. The first league, the Erste Bundesliga, is the best league and where the best teams of the countries play. In the professional men's soccer or football, you can find three professional leagues, Erste, Zweite und Dritte Bundesliga. In the professional women's football, you can find two leagues, Erste und Zweite Bundesliga. A league season typically lasts from August till May, then there's a summer break, and the whole shenanigans starts again. All teams play against each other twice. Usually there's the Hinrunde, pretty much August till Christmas, and the Rückrunde, January till May, against the other team. There is a home game, Heimspiel in German, and a away game, Auswärtsspiel in German. And throughout the league um, and throughout the season, you collect points. And at the end of the season, at the end of the, in May, the team with the most points is the German champion. And this year, I would say something fantastical happened in 2024, where Neverkusen, meaning like a team that would never, ever, has ever won the Bundesliga, won the Bundesliga for the very first time. And gave it a nice change because in the past 10 years, Bayern Munich has won, so it's kind of boring in which a way for favorite, some. Which is your favorite team, by the way? Which is the team that I sympathize uh, with, okay. yes, yeah. <laughs> So this has been a very nice change and very refreshing, especially because they didn't lose one single game. So it's super impressive and um, kudos. Like I'm, I'm very much uh, thrilled by that. Okay, so that's the Bundesliga, but that's not the only kind of like football thing that happens, right? Mm -hmm. There's the DFB Pokal, correct, which is the German Cup, correct. And how does that one work? Mm -hmm. Again, this is not news. Other countries have it as well. And the German Cup is a nice change to the league because here we are not collecting points throughout the season, but every single match is a knockout match. So you win or lose, and if you lose, you're out of the entire cup. What is so fascinating and thrilling about this cup is that regardless of which league a team plays in, so first, second or third league, they all play against each other. It's pretty much a raffle where the matches get drawn and get assigned. And it is very common that so-called underdogs from the second or third league kick out the um, favorite team because they're playing in the first league. For example, this season, an underdog from the third league, Saarbrücken, threw out three first league teams in a row, and that was very impressive, including Bayern. Oh, wow. Interesting. I would also say there was the game between Leverkusen, which we just mentioned, that won the Bundesliga, and Dusseldorf, Fortuna. And yeah, that was unfortunately not such an exciting match because Leverkusen killed Fortuna 4-0. But it was an interesting game to watch at the pub. Uh, all the Germans were very uh, enthusiastic whenever the ball would come close to the Leverkusen goalie. Um, but unfortunately, we never got a score. I say we now, because I'm so into football. <laughs> <laughs> the final of the DFB Pokal. By the way, DFB stands for Deutscher Fußballbund. Bund as in color? No, Bund as an association. Ah. Mm. Like with a D, not a T. Ah. Mm -hmm. And Pokal means cup. But the final of the DFB Pokal is always, always in Berlin. And you might, it's very common in German culture for anything, even completely soccer, non-soccer like, non related. related, that the chant goes Berlin, 
Berlin. Wir fahren nach Berlin. And this arrives from the final of the cup in Berlin. Okay, now that we got the basics covered, like my big question is like, what makes it so special? Don't, doesn't other countries also have football leagues and stuff? Yeah, of course. Every, I mean, not every, but a lot of big nations are out there when it comes to leagues and football. However, Germany stands out. And the reason why it stands out, there is a lot of controversy around it, but let me just explain what it is and then You make your own <laughs> Exactly, you can form your own opinion about it. Germany is world famous for its fan club culture. And the reason behind it is that German football on a club level is not based on capitalism, as it is in a lot of other leagues, where billionaires from, let's say, the Arab countries or other countries buy clubs, push in money, buy the most expensive players and pretty much just make it a capitalist game. Hmm. That is not possible in Germany because of a set rule that the entire league system is based on. Wait, but there are two exceptions to this rule? Let me first explain that. Okay, sorry. This jumping. rule that I'm talking about is 50 plus 1. That's what it's called. That's been on the news tons because of its controversy. And it pretty much says that the club itself needs to be 50% plus one vote, so the majority, in the hands of fan club members, so not in the hands of external investors. And because of that, the fan club members have a voice, they're being heard, and they are very strong in their opinion and protecting their culture and them being involved in the club. And because of that, foreign investors are not allowed, they simply aren't. There's two exceptions, like you just said, and those are Leverkusen, mm -hmm. Bayer Leverkusen, and Wolfsburg. And the reason being is because those two clubs were originally founded from Two companies, Bayer, the pharmaceutical company, and VW, uh, Wolfsburg from VW, the car company. So they were they originate as a club based out of the company. And because they were always company owned in that sense, they are allowed to still be company owned. However, they still have to abide by the general rules of not selling their shares to external investors in that Ooh, sense. That is super interesting. So meaning like the fan is taken very seriously in Germany. Correct. Maybe even more so than in other countries. Yes. And because of that, what Germany is known for is full stadiums. Like the stadiums in German club levels, club teams are always full. Not just in the first league, but also in the second and even third league. When I did my research, I actually found some crazy statistics, which this should not be a statistics video, but just to give you a little bit of an idea. For example, the second league, the zweite Bundesliga, where Fortuna is currently playing, when it comes to world statistics, it is the fourth league in the world when it comes to stadium tickets sold. That is crazy. That is more than first league tickets being sold in Spain, Italy and France with wow. huge, I mean, huge football teams and also culture. And depending on the team, like I said before, even the third league has full stadiums. I found a video on YouTube from a British football fan who, you know, wanted to experience the German culture. And he went to a third league game in Dresden. The uh, team is called Dynamo Dresden. And the video that I saw was mesmerizing. You can see fan blocks, like the ultra fans, standing, chanting, like all arm in arm, <laughs> jumping up and down, making noise as if it was a first league game. And this is what is so special and unique about the German football culture. And another thing that makes it so special, and it's because I think of all of also the history of Germany, the local football club culture, it is a very... It's, it's a pride thing. People identify with it, feel a sense of um, community and integrity there. And when you ask someone, uh, we did a video on German patriotism, which you can watch up there. Germans are way more, if they're into football, to identify or generally speaking to their region than to Germany as itself. And football plays a big role in that as well. I totally agree. And another shocking thing, for example, that we saw in Dusseldorf, uh, who for two nights in the second league, that it's that uh, ticket prices were for free for fan club members to support the team. And this leads also that ticket prices are relatively affordable to everyone that wants to go watch football, right? Correct, yeah. Generally speaking, again, if you compare it to the English, uh, the Premier League, ticket prices are so, so, so affordable. And also, there is a lot, a very high percentage of permanent, like um, season tickets being sold. There are, each stadium has um, standing spots, so those, of course, cheaper, those create the ambience. I mean, the stadium in Dortmund is known, the yellow wall worldwide. People just want to go there to experience that feeling because you have just one entire wall of people standing, jumping, chanting in one color. It is really, really impressive. And this is, I think, 
Yes, you have football around the world, but this is something very, very unique. And because of that, it's also sometimes, depending on the team, quite difficult to get tickets. Hmm. That is super crazy, right? And I would also say it's super impressive because this yellow wall that you described or any other kind of like decoration that we see within the super fans, yeah, it's like self-organized, which I think it's super impressive because once you see like the whole, like they have messages, they have all kinds of different choreographies and stuff that they do, which I find it super impressive. Yeah, and it's, sure. a, it's a passion. Yeah, they just do it because they believe in their team and um, it's their community yeah actually only after living in germany for a few years i came about to this term actually and it's ultras and i've seen for example ultras being uh graffitied with f95 it's like the fortuna 95 which is again the second league of dusseldorf where we live and ultras have been seen it everywhere and i've always wondered is this a, like a cool name or is this offensive if you ask someone if they're an ultra what is your experience with that so to be honest, I, that's what I mean. I'm an enthusiast. I'm not a fan because I've never owned a club jersey. I've never had a season ticket. I've been a few times to a stadium of a club, but not regularly. So I wouldn't consider myself a fan. Whereas an ultra, that's the ones who travel to the award, uh, away games. Those are the ones that have the season tickets, that do the, the, the choreographies and the chanting. They get their tattoos. They get their tattoos, exactly. They do the graffiti. So those are the hardcore fans. However, in my impression, and this is just my impression, I, again, there's no statistics or research based on this. If we speak of ultras, another term that comes to my mind is hooligans, which I don't associate as much with German football fans as with other nations. Hmm. So yes, there might be some very intense uh, ultras in Germany, but I used to have a colleague who actually was part of the ultras of the Mönchengladbach team. And I asked him once, so tell me a little bit more about it. Why are you there? What uh, um, is your purpose and what ignites you? And he actually, for him, it was about community. So he was already like a seasoned ultra and for him it was about integrating and welcoming younger um, teenagers or adolescents, integrating them and giving them also a, um, how do you say, like a future, like a purpose, like a... Yeah, like making them feel part of a community yeah. and, and that they belong somewhere. Correct, mm. yeah. So it was about the community really and not, I mean, of course, soccer is the vessel in this sense, but it wasn't about being aggressive or being... Um, I hate everyone else, that's not for my team. He didn't express it in that way, so that was very interesting. And also I would say he was a very nice colleague. Yeah. I liked him very much, so not to point that not just because you're an ultra, you're necessarily like... A radical. A radical, yeah, <laughs> and super aggressive or something like that. During my research, because I wanted to dig a little bit deeper and not just talk about my perspective, I was actually super surprised with some numbers that I found. And that is that when we look at pure club members, I would say there's a distinguishment between a fan because if you think about football fans, Real Madrid, I think, has the most fans around the world. But that is just like a fan who likes to watch the games on TV, like in Guate, where they have no football culture themselves, right? We do. Wait, hold on. <laughs> so first of all, it's Real Madrid, verdad? It's not like Real Madrid. <laughs> Second of all, Guatemala has a football culture, but it's not world known. And we do have the rojos y cremas, you know, like the red and the, and the white. But it's not at the level of Real Madrid, of course. So watching a game from a Spanish or European league is a lot more higher level than a Guatemalan. Right, but they're just fans, right? They're yes. not club members. I wouldn't know because I never was involved, yes. but generally speaking, yes, I would agree. So if we look at club members who actually pay a fee every year to be a member of the club of uh, a local soccer team, Bayern Munich is actually worldwide the football club with the most members. That for me was what? Crazy. That shows again this, this loyalty and the hardcore basis of actual club membership and what that means. And currently they're having around 320,000 club members, which sounds little if you think of the world and the millions of fans, but again, we're talking about club members. People that actually pay to be part of it. Yes. And what is even more interesting, if we look at the top 10 of football clubs worldwide with club members, Germany has three clubs in there. Schalke, and Dortmund being also amongst the top 10. No other country in the world has as many club teams in the top 10 when it comes to members. And that expresses again why the fan club culture in Germany is so special. I have to be very honest and kind of like, um, I feel bad about it and I'm gonna try to fix it this year, but I've never actually gone to see a football game in Germany. Um, yeah, but you've gone. Yes. And how, what was your experience like? Yes, so actually, like I said, I'm not going regularly to, uh, to a club or to a game. However, two years ago, we went to, with my sister and my dad uh, into the Forbidden City, if we come from Düsseldorf, to Cologne to support the FC, 
den ersten FC Köln. And yes, we got a scarf. It was a birthday gift from my dad. He likes the FC very much. So we were all there dressed up and in the stadium. It was uh, relatively difficult to get tickets because the Cologne team is one of the ones that again has such a strong fan club basis that not many tickets get actually open to the public. Uh, so you really have to want to go. And we made it and the stadium was just amazing. I mean, the chance before the, t uh, the game, during the game, the atmosphere is not just that the, because um, in the stadium you usually have like this block where the fans are, like the ultras who do the chants, but the entire stadium was singing. Again, because it's a local identity. There's songs being played that any person from Cologne is like proud to sing along <laughs> and, and wave the scarf. And we were in the middle of that and it was just so beautiful and very, very special. And I felt very much like, oh, this is my Heimat. <laughs> Cologne is your home, but you well, live in Düsseldorf. The area of the Rheinland. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay, Bonn, Cologne, Düsseldorf. It's, it's the area. Inclusive, yeah, yeah. And also, I would say this is super interesting because your sister, who lives in the south of Germany, she has been to a couple of the Bayern games. And I asked her, if you compare Das Gefühl, you know, like the feeling or the vibe from a Cologne game to a Bayern game. And in her perspective, she mentioned the same, right? That in the Bayern, unless like the in the ultra section is where you feel the energy the most. However, in Cologne, it was like the whole stadium. You felt the vibe. Because and the the fans of Cologne are different than the fans of Bayern, yes. yeah. So that's super interesting, yeah. right? Yeah. And when it comes to chants and songs and all these things, and if you want to participate, for example, it's super easy. You can go to Spotify and actually you can find, you can actually type in the name of the club and there are all the songs that they generally There's sing playlists, at the stadium. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to the extent that my brother-in-law, who is not a football fan at all. And mind you, he's from Northern Germany. Yeah, so he that he also went to this Bayern game and afterwards he was singing the Bayern songs and playing the playlist in uh, Spotify because again, it's like this feeling that gets created through music and community and unity, I think, which is super funny. <laughs> so I feel like I should I should go to, to a football game. Question is, which one? Well, Fortuna. Yeah, maybe I go to the Cologne one. I'm kidding. <laughs> Now, how can you get involved in the German football culture? That is, if you want to get involved, of course. So at the pro level, meaning like all the games that we watch on TV, that could either be Erste, Zweite oder Dritte Liga. The best thing, I think, is to uh, follow uh, the news and keep up to date with who is winning and what is happening in the Bundesliga and the Pokal. And this is an amazing icebreaker, for example, in companies. Oh my God, I would have colleagues that they would spend the whole Monday morning just talking about football and did you watch this? And I don't believe it. And they would do like the whole analysis and all these things. I would put my headphones because like I said, I'm not interested that much, but it would be a perfect icebreaker to just get into conversation with someone. So another interesting thing is that the Club Liga games, the Bundesliga are not on free TV in Germany. So you cannot just watch the entire game on TV. However, Sportschau is uh, from the from the ARD, from the public broadcasting, they do summaries of the games, um, Saturdays, Sundays, uh, evenings on TV, and of course also on sportschau.de. That's where I watch the highlights of games that interest me on Mondays. That's when the videos become free. And um, yeah, wherever I'm interested, that's how I kind of like keep up to date. Another very common, not everywhere, but in my former um, teams and companies that was the case, you can join a so-called Tipprunde. So usually before the season, there is uh, the colleagues, the Germans, whoever are involved, they ask around who wants to join. And you um, sometimes even pay for it because you're betting, right, on who wins the game or the league. And then each week before the game's happening, you need to give your, your tips of how the, the games are going to end. And someone usually keeps score and it's again another beautiful way to be in a community, be involved, um, have a conversation topic and uh, yeah, maybe even watch a few games together. Yeah, I got this tip of wonder experience during the World Cup and someone was actually asking around, hey, do you want to participate? It's like five euros or something. And I think I participated and lost, of course, because <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Other ways to do it is that especially when your regional team is playing, you can go to a traditional a Brauhaus, a German um, pub. They play the games there. Of course, you can also go to an Irish pub and all these things. But I would say in the Brauhaus is where you feel the Stimmung a lot more than in any other bar. You can also, there are kiosks, especially in summertime. Well, you said there's a summer break. So are there games in summer? No, but I mean, we see in the fall and the spring, we have this one kiosk here by the Rhine that's on the way from the city center to the stadium. And it's actually called the Fortuna kiosk. True. And, and there people can... are always standing there before, after the game, having a beer, having a chat. And um, just throw on a scarf to kind of like show, Blend in. <laughs> show people you are here to talk soccer, to talk football. And it's a great way to start conversation. People are very open minded, especially, let's say, here in the Rhineland. But I would say also probably in other areas of Germany. Yes, I totally agree. 
If you're not into football, one hot tip I can give you is that watch out for full trains and people. We've had multiple experiences that we wanted to cycle into the city of Dusseldorf and it's on a game day. And that means there's like hundreds of people everywhere on bikes. Thousands. Thousands, okay, already drinking beer on the way, getting in the way. And no matter how many ding-dings you do with your bike, they don't get out of the way because there's just so many people. That is, of course, if you live in a city with a stadium nearby and, and you're in that area, right? Vicinity. Yes, if and you... the trains as well, I would say, are super packed. So if you are not into football and you want to avoid big crowds, just make sure to have follow football just to know when the local games are happening to avoid um, that time to go yeah. <laughs> out. <laughs> also, sometimes the other day we were on the highway, actually, and we saw two cars with their blue and white scarves out the windows. It's very common also if you are on the highway around a match day in the big stadium to see the fans and to hang the scarf out of the car is super common. You asked, is this a wedding? I'm like, no, they're heading to the Schalke game. True. Also, and they're like honking all the time. It's like very loud. <laughs> kind of like doing all the things you're not supposed to be doing on the Autobahn. <laughs> they're still driving properly. Now, if you would like to play football yourself or actually your kids to join a football club, you can do so by joining a Verein, it's called in German, and they exist like everywhere. What there's, did you say? There's 25? There's 25,000 Fußballvereine in Germany. Wow. Really many. Yeah. And there's both for children, women, men, boys. I mean, there's really for everything, I would say. So if you want to get involved and play some football yourself, you can do so as well. Also in Dusseldorf, we have this really cool place called Cageball, which is um, a mini football. It's uh, usually five on five. And there you can also play. You don't need to be part of a Verein. You no. just need to rent the court and, and do so. Bring your group and play here. We used to do that for quite some time. For quite some for time. Quite some time. Yeah, yeah. Until we retired from our football career. <laughs> See, so you are interested in football. Playing, but not watching. Mm -hmm. It's too emotional for me. Ah! <laughs> like we've mentioned in many of our videos, joining a Verein, whether that is for sports or for arts or for culture, any of your hobbies or interests, is a fantastic way to find a community and find like-minded people and possibly even friends. We have also opened our own Verein. I mean, it's not officially a Verein, but you know, since we're talking about clubs and it's our own club, which is called the Smoothwood Club. And it's a Discord community where like-minded people like ourselves and probably you watching can hang out and interact and not only talk about football, there's a channel for sports, not just football. However, to talk about everything else that has to do about moving and living and adapting to the life in Germany. Yeah, and we have club members from all over the world, literally from all continents, more or less. And uh, some that are already in Germany, others they're about to move. And it's a very fluid, happy, encouraging conversation that is happening there on a daily basis. It's very active. So if you'd like to become a member as well, then you can uh, click on the link in the description below or hit simplegermany.com slash club and become a member as well. Yeah, we can't wait to welcome you personally into the club. So we hope you enjoyed our football culture video and we'll see you next Monday. Cheers! Cheers.